Hello everyone, welcome to video 6 in my Apollo Moon Hoax series. Uh, today I'm going to respond to some comments that were made in video 5. So for those of you that haven't seen video 5, please uh, view that video first and then come back to uh, video 6. Anyway, in that video um, I talked about the Saturn V and the F1 engines and the minimal testing of both the Saturn V and F1 engines in the actual conditions of flight. And it was pointed out um, that the first launch of the space shuttle, um, which didn't, wasn't exactly uh, tested in the actual conditions of space flight, it, it did do, um, they did test it um, within Earth's atmosphere um, as a glider, and that seemed to work really well. Um, but they actually didn't test it in the actual conditions of space flight. And it was launched with the first crew. So the first launch of the space shuttle with the first crew, which is true and is disturbing. You would think that um, NASA would have used, um, would have sent up an automated um, mission before they would certify it for a crew, which is what the Soviets used to do with their new manned space vehicles. They would send them up at least twice, um, uh, automated flights twice, before they would certify it for astronauts. So um, it is true, but it's also disturbing that NASA would take a chance like that. However, there are some subtle differences between the F-1 engines and the minimal testing in actual flight conditions compared to the uh, space shuttle. Um, in the space shuttle, it used the space shuttle rather used uh, two solid fuel boosters to assist in its launch. Now, there was a problem with the combustion stability of the solid fuel boosters, but that was solved back in 1951 by a brilliant rocket scientist by the name of Jack Parsons. And so from 30 years on up to the first launch of the space shuttle, the solid fuel boosters had a, a pretty good record of reliability. Now, the space shuttle main engines also had a history going back to the 1960s, so it had, um, they had about 15 years to perfect those engines as well. And both the solid fuel boosters and the space shuttle main engines uh, went through a lot of testing, a lot of static testing in the 1970s leading up, of course, to the first launch of the space shuttle. But you have to admit that it would be disturbing, it is disturbing that NASA would have taken a chance um, of sending up the first um, space shuttle with a crew instead of testing in an actual space, uh, space conditions before certifying it for uh, astronauts. So, um, but again, you know, we're talking about NASA's history of hit and miss. Now, in this particular uh, instance, it, it seemed to have worked in the space shuttle. They had 20 years with the space shuttle before it retired, and before they retired the space shuttle in 2011. Um, and of course, now it seems that NASA's uh, out of the, um, launching their own uh, manned space capability to lower, uh, to lower Earth orbit. So um, they keep saying they're going to get to it, but they keep pushing the date back. So, well, we'll see about that. Anyway, I'm going to be talking more about this. Um, it's going to be an ongoing theme in this video series, and I may write about it as well. So um, I'll probably have more information about this in future videos. Um, I would like to respond to a couple of uh, emails that I've um, gotten about book two, um, asking me when that's going to be uh, published. And uh, right now, book two is going uh, pretty good. It's about half done, and I'm hoping to have it published by the summer of 2020. It may be out sooner, depending on how the editing and proofreading goes but it's going to be very comprehensive. And actually, I'm going to be talking, um, I'm writing, I've written a whole chapter on Jack Parsons, the brilliant rocket scientist I mentioned, and he is a fascinating character in all of this, and I think you will really enjoy um, learning more about this interesting uh, character. He was certainly brilliant, and not your stereotypical rocket scientist, so I hope you look forward to that. And I'm also going to be doing um, a more comprehensive uh, look, I'm taking a more comprehensive look at the Apollo program from 1961 up to 1969. And of course, I will be um, writing a detailed analysis of the alleged Apollo 11 
uh, moon landing. So I hope you look forward to that. And I'll keep you updated um, in the next uh, couple of months on how the book is going. And speaking of book two, first of all, I'd just like to announce that I've um, signed up with a publisher. The publisher's name is Writer's Republic. And they've now published the book. Um, they've republished the book, actually, on I think it's about 15 online book sites, um, including Barnes and Noble and uh, Amazon. And they did a really nice, uh, did some nice work on enhancing the cover. And if you remember the uh, original cover, which I quite like, and uh, uh, I think it's 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 pretty good. Um, they've enhanced that. They've kept kept the same basic design. They've enhanced that to uh, this, and I really like this version. So I hope that um, you will uh, check that out. And a couple of other things I just want to mention. Um, they've also this um, uh, publishing company has. Uh, set up a website for me and um, so please uh, check that out as well um, there um, you can uh, you know read comments on there from me and uh, you can blog on there yourself and uh, I always look forward to reading your comments and of course please um, feel free to contact me or leave comments on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page and you can also contact me at authorrandy at hotmail.com. All of this uh, contact information is below, so you can check it out uh, there. And I look forward to uh, hearing from all of you. Now, this is going to be my last video for this year. So I would just like to wish all of you a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Bye for now.